Morocco, the crossroads of Europe, Africa, and Arabia, has some of the most diverse culture and geography in the world. There's everything in the world here. As little as 15 miles of movement can reveal a completely new landscape. The cultural variety is equally rich. Fez, Morocco's second largest city, was founded in the 9th century and is home to the oldest university in the world. This city is regarded as the country's cultural and spiritual center. We're heading into the market, the souk, where it's going to get very crowded, they tell us. It was much different than any other market I've ever been in. Yes, camel meat. Are we ever going to taste camel meat on the uh, trip? Well, I don't know how, uh, to what extent you will like it, because no matter how well you cook it, it remains like tough, hard to choke. But I will, I will try to get you some to, 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 to taste, yes, no problem. We'll try to have it preserved. That's the honey cake. That's normally what we use for breaking the fast. In the month of Ramadan, it's sweet, it gives you energy you lose during the day. Trip leader Mohamed Hajouji shares his insider's knowledge of Fez, the city he calls home. This is our first Arab country. OAT, we've just done it before, and we've just, it's, he's very professional. There's never been a problem with the guide, so I mean, there's a lot of confidence in that. You see the goat skin container? Huh? Oh, so they yes, clean them and is, they fill them up with water. I like his honesty. Good professional guide is, is really valuable. And may God lift you over the Africa's Sahara Desert is the size of the United States. It is the biggest source of sand and dust in the entire world. My most exciting part was that sandstorm. And join me inside. Uh, and normally when you have a sandstorm, we pass it around. <laughs> Head scars provide protection from the wind-blown sand. Camels are equipped with their own defenses. They have two rows of long eyelashes to keep the wind-blown sand out of their eyes. True elements. And we're just stinging from all that sand. I think really that's going to be the most memorable. You know, Ken and I were just giggling all the way to the tent. We couldn't see each other. Almost there until we got inside, and then it was cozy. Ah, here's my tent. And that'll be probably the first thing we tell our friends is about the sandstorm in the Sahara. After a night with some of the brightest stars seen from anywhere on Earth, the sun rises in the east, shining over 3,000 miles of desert. Well, it made me feel I like the uh, visiting with the people, getting to know the people. This tent is made of woven camel wool, a homegrown commodity these nomads put to use in countless ways. Oh, is this, is this camel hair? <laughs> it's hard. It's no? harder than it looks, no. right? These nomads are ethnic Tuareks. A series of snare frame drums called bandiers provide the main percussive rhythm for their music. Tuareg women often release a special call or scream to express celebration. And the men were singing and the drums were beating and we were dancing and it was such a joyful experience. Unlike the fully nomadic tribes of the Sahara, semi-nomadic people live here in the Middle Atlas Mountains. 
They lead their herds into these mountains each spring to graze for the season. There is not the whole family here because today it's a market day. So they went I mean, to the uh, souk. The nearest souk, or market, is a half-hour drive away and provides this young woman's family of seven with all the food supplies it needs. She just was smiling and laughing so much at the time. Well, that's what I told her. Now it's your turn. Tenahir, Morocco is a prized oasis city providing a lush retreat from the arid ruggedness of the surrounding Atlas Mountains. For the locals of this emerald in the sand, the pattern of daily life is old, centuries, even millennia. For most Amazigh, the day begins before sunrise with a morning call to prayer, the first of five calls for the day ahead. <laughs> then it's off to the market or souk, where locals will bargain for everyday necessities like grain, clothing, and especially livestock. Once a week, this town's live animal market is also a place to share stories and socialize. Animals are central for many households in Tenahir, but for the semi-nomadic people surrounding the city, they are vital. In these families, the men tend to the livestock. The women look after the family. For all families, traditional Moroccan cuisine served at lunch and dinner has changed little over time. Tajine is a local staple, commonly eaten with flatbread called hubs. While education in Tenahir has improved recently, for many children in the more rural areas, access to school remains limited. Some young students in the region have a long way to travel to school. More than 160 young boys who wouldn't otherwise have access to education come to this center, funded by the Grand Circle Foundation, to live, study, and enjoy some well-earned recreation. Marrakesh's main square is arguably the busiest in Africa, the center of activity and trade in this city, known for its color and social vibrancy. Hey, we've had mules, donkeys, camels, and now we're in a carriage. Now we're moving up each time. I think I feel like a royal princess riding around in a carriage. Whoa! From the beaches of the Atlantic Ocean, to the snowy peaks in the Atlas Mountains, to the desert sands of the Sahara, Morocco is a land of stark contrasts. Each day, a new discovery. I was so furious with my children when they got a tattoo. You only live once. This is completely out of the normal range of our experience, so I just love it. <laughs> Well, absolutely worth every the trip. Penny. An experience you could not describe unless you went there. Oh, my name is uh, Aziz Kabiri, and uh, I am a tour director for OAT on the Morocco Sahara Odyssey. I was born and raised in the Medina of Fez in Morocco and the, it is a step back into, into history, into space and time. 
and the, once you go through one of the gateways, actually you are back into the 9th and 10th century. It is a maze, and it's made out of 9,000 alleyways, and 850 alleyways are dead ends. You can turn around in circles. When I was five years old, I used to run away, and they used to get lost, start crying, somebody's gonna grab me and put me back where I belong. So, so th this is where I grew. And the country is not big. It is the, the size of Texas. And if you move 10 kilometers, the scenery is going to look completely different. And the, we have everything you can imagine. We, I mean, Morocco has got very green land, a very arable land. And the, one of the most beautiful regions in the country is the, the, the Tudra Valley and the Dadis Valley. And these valleys are all along the High Atlas Mountains. We go visit families and we have home hosted meals and then the, the travelers get to meet with the people, talk to the people and uh, learn about the country from the people themselves. Come, join up with us. We are looking forward to welcoming you into Morocco. From your hometown, you'll set out on a journey of discovery. We fly from the U.S. to Casablanca where our local trip leader waits to guide us along a loop encompassing Morocco's varied lands. After discovering the ancient palaces and modern plazas of Rabat, we explore the Roman ruins of Volubilis and the minarets of Meknes on our way to Fez. Then we travel south across the Middle Atlas Mountains and on to our tented camp in the Sahara. And we journey to the oasis of Tinegir before capping our adventure with a discovery of the Medina of Marrakesh a UNESCO World Heritage Site. On this adventure, you'll explore some of the highlights of North Africa. We'll discover several UNESCO World Heritage Sites, like the Medinas of Fez and Marrakesh, the mountain fortress of Aita Ben Hadou, and the ancient Roman settlement of Volubilis. We'll take in striking views of the Moroccan landscape and visit remote villages as we travel across the Atlas Mountains. And a real highlight will be our stay in the Sahara, where we'll walk the golden dunes and sleep in comfortable tents beneath the countless stars of the desert sky.